if you think your offensive line is the problem, then what are you going to do to fix it, right? And are you just talking to us? It's kind of like when you hear Coach Nagy talking about the run game. Uh, I just don't know how much he means it or if he really really thinks that that is the problem because they never really try to fix it. By that, I mean sign offensive linemen and or sign tight ends who can actually block uh, for the run game. So, um, you know, in 2019, they say that, and then they draft – two offensive linemen in the seventh round and bring in free agents like Jermaine Effetti uh, for the for the veteran league minimum. And and to me, that's not saying you want to fix something, Lawrence. For me, if you want to fix something, I go right to where Coach Nagy's mentor is and he and Andy Reid says, I got to fix my offensive line after I lose the Super Bowl. So I throw 80 million at Joe Tooney. I trade for Orlando Brown. I draft Creed Humphrey in the second round. Now there's a team throwing assets at their offensive line because they want to fix it. If you want to know why the Bears' offensive line struggles so much once they have injuries, just take a look at how much money they have put into their offensive line and how much people they have there to step up if somebody goes down. And you could take uh, the Bears' starting offensive line, which I think I have to go back and look again, but I think salary cap-wise, they're making about $13 million total this year, whereas Jimmy Graham... Uh, their spot playing tight end who you put it in the red zone who's not a great run blocker so you're not going to use them on first and second down I will argue with you that by the, the year's end it'll be Jesse James and Cole Komet on the field mostly uh, you're paying him just about 10 million a year so the Bears whole offensive line combined is making two million more dollars than this spot playing tight end because you think that those matchups in the red zone are splitting them out are more important than what you keep talking about. You keep talking about fixing your offensive line. You keep talking about the run game. I just don't see you doing things to fix it. And what what bothered me, and I was kind of doing amen, hallelujah, while I was in the car listening, was I'm not here to tell anybody that Charles Leno was great at his job. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you that he was available every week. Mm -hmm. And if you were going to replace him, you needed to have some structure behind it and say, okay, we are planning to make a move in the draft, but let's bolster this position up and let's have someone with actual left tackle experience in the fold or or you could have kept Charles Leno until mm -hmm. you knew for sure that you had his replacement. Imagine that. And listen, if, if you want to argue with me on Twitter, you notice I just leave it alone after a while and tell me that you don't really follow offensive line in the NFL. Keep acting like you're really, really mad at Charles Leno. Look, the starting left tackles in the NFL nowadays, the best guys in the league, the top three guys make over $20 million a year, right? Uh, Colton Miller, the left tackle for the Raiders, who I don't know what people think about him, he's making $18 million a year. Do you know how much Charles Leno is making this year for the Washington Redskins? He's making $4 million. So I don't know if you go to him, you try to rework his contract or whatever you may do, but this is what I'm saying in basically anything in life, Lawrence, you pretty much get what you pay for, right? And Charles Leno, most get people would rank him right around 17 through 20 in the NFL at left tackle. That's basically what the Bears are paying him, right? So you're getting uh, what you're paying for. 